Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for this video. I'm going to do another bloom spiral, similar to this one here. Um, I loved doing this. Um, it, it, it's so involved, there's so much detail and I just love the whole process of it. So I want to go again, but with a dark base. So um, I'm going to use up some leftover paints. You might you might have heard me say before, I'm stopping using Flood Floatrol simply because it cost me £70. It used to cost me £40 a bottle, but now it cost me £70. In, um, in the UK and that is extortionate so I'm not doing it I'm refusing to pay it so I'm using up paints that have already been mixed with Floritrol so I've got loads of little bits of blues so I'm going to mix them all together to see what I get just as a way of using them up and then I think what I'm going to do is some pinks so some pink blooms um, some sort of warm colours on top um, to create a spiral a bit like this so really excited to um, use up my colours to clear some more space in my art studio um, and just to see what this will look like on a dark base. So I've just pulled all the blues I have off my shelf in a lot of them there's just only a tiny tiny amount so it's going to be a real pain just using a tiny amount for something so I, I think I'm just going to put, put them all together. I've also got some teals and some turquoises so I'm just going to see how much I've got. In fact, these might some of these might actually be empty. Maybe what I should do. There we go. I'm literally just got drops out of this one. If I put them all standing up, and then at least they can drain down a bit. Just I just don't like wasting any. So if I can use even just the tiniest bit. Now there's quite a bit of this one, which is the blue black. So let's give that a nice mix and see what sort of bluey colour I get. Oh, it's light. It's a lot lighter than I was expecting. So I think I'm going to add the this one here. This is greenish blue. Now that is absolutely beautiful colour. There's some iridescence in there. So it's shimmery. It's quite sparkly. It's blue, but it's definitely got um, a greeny tinge to it really like that i'm not going to put these other greens in i don't want it to go any greener that is beautiful now if you use the ends of paints often it thickens up a little bit i'd say that's slightly too thick so i'm just going to add a splash of water in oh that was a bit more than a splash So that's now I'm quite happy with that consistency it's nice and runny my canvas is 50 centimeters I've sketched on a spiral so um if you can I've, there's two lines so if you can imagine this bit here is the spiral this is going to have the color on whereas this bit in between is just going to stay the base color the dark color um so I've made some little strips of frog tape and folded them one third over and cut the edges so I've just been able to create a little um, barrier along the edge of each of the the spirals and then with a pair of scissors I've just let me show you what I did I literally just had the scissors sort of on the canvas and cut it like that so that the bit that sticks up is much shorter now so what will happen is the paint will be um, blown out over this canvas and it should blow out fine because these ridges are quite low. But because there are ridges, I'm still going to be able to see the edge of my spiral. So there's less guesswork involved as to where to put the paint and how to create the spiral once the base is down. Um, so first thing will be to um, put the base down. So I'm, I'm going to pour a little bit on and then I will use my hairdryer. Oh, what a beautiful colour. I'm going to use my hairdryer just to blow this out. Now, I hope I've got enough paint. I want to try and save a little bit. It's useful to save some in case you have to do any little touch-ups at the end. I 
have decided to use i've got um a very pale blue i think again i think this was just a color that was mixed or resulted from a pour it's a little bit like wedgwood blue it's also a little bit like a powdery blue a baby blue i've got a pale pink that i've mixed which is pearl white and i think a bit of conacridone rose um i've got the purple by i think it's royal and lang nickel i've got some oops, some montmartre gold and i've got some metallic pink mixed with a metallic purple so they're, they're all a bit of a combination so they're the colors i will use then i've got some cell activator which is mixed with australian floritrol australian floritrol separates so make sure you always give it a really good mix um, or good stir before you use it right so now i need to just remember which bit which bits can I have paint and which bits the white gap the painted bit will be the bit that gets wider yep so it's this bit here i'm going to do a single bloom right in the center of this of this gap so that's the pale blue gold pale pink and the dark purple and then let's put a little bit of cell activator on and blow out that out and see what it looks like So that's three drops of cell activator. So I'm going to blow on, blow on this. I'm going to blow the white across the colours in, in a few different directions. Let's just have a look, see what we get, what colours show up. The lacing is stunning. Quite a lot of the turquoise is showing up from beneath. There's not much pale blue. Do you know, I'm going to leave the metallic pink out. I don't think I need it. I think I just need the light colours. The gold is showing. Okay, I'm just going to go in that order. I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. Now, they're quite big blooms. So I'm going to do them a reasonable distance apart. And I seem to be doing just one bloom, don't I actually? Maybe as it gets wider, I'm going to have to do it um, a bit thicker. I mean, I mean, a couple of blooms across the width. As I'm getting nearer the centre, I'm just trying to do one spot of paint, not two. Wow, the gold is actually coming through a lot more on that now. Right, I've decided I'm going to take the tape up now because the tape is now going to interfere with these blooms, certainly in the middle here. So I've put the puddles down so I know where my guide is now. So I think, I think it should be fine to do with this.
am so happy with this so far. I've got a lot of work to do. So this is by no means finished. I've got a lot to do. But the colours standing out from that base work so well. You can see the pale blue around the edge of each of the blooms. You can see the gold, you can see the pale pink and you can see the purple. And then you can see the white from the cell activator. So I am really, really happy. What I need to do now, I'm going to carry on blowing around the blooms, but with a straw. And I'm going to just close up these gaps and these edges. So it's now the blooms will lose their shape a bit, but I'm going to get that spiral because now the spiral is more important than the actual blooms. Um, so I'm just using a straw um, to, to, get, to get the shape I want. finished but there's one absolutely crucial step to finish this off and that is now to do some little twiddly bits between all the uh, blooms and um, what I tend to like to do is at the gap at the junction between two corners is do a little swirl and again it just tightens the spiral it just brings the spiral together really nicely um, again you, you do lose a bit of the bloom shape but that's not what's most important. What's most important to me is that I get that spiral. And the whole time I've been doing this, what I'm looking at is really the width of that dark blue spiral, because I want that width to be reasonably even all the way around. It's not perfect, but it, it never will be. Um, so, yeah, there's a big sort of gap here. So I'm just doing a little little swirl just to bring it, tie it together. And I think this just finishes it for me. It just pulls the whole thing together. These colors are so pretty. I really think when it dries, that gold is going to look stunning. It's such a bright, sparkly gold, rich gold. I think it's just gonna shine. I love that pale blue, the pale blue on the on the dark blue base. Um, you can just see every colour. I'm pretty amazed. Um, often when I do this, I miss some of the colours, but you can see the pale pink, the dark pink or purple, the blue and the gold. You can see them all. So what I'm really happy with is this spiral is one bloom thick. So normally I do loads of little blooms and crap blooms and cram them all in. And it then actually means you don't get to see the beautiful lacing in quite the same way. So with this, they're much more spread out. You can see all that beautiful lacing. The little twirly bits just pull it all together just to make it into a tighter spiral. Um, really happy with my centre as well. There isn't really any lacing in that centre, but actually that doesn't matter. I'm just pleased that I didn't put too much paint on, that I've actually got uh, quite a nice tight spiral. Um, the corners were tricky uh, because you get so much paint on the corner. You've, um, so I, I sort of piled it on and then tried to blow a lot of it off just so I got the edge. And probably the most difficult bit actually was this edge because I just wanted a touch of it on the edge not too much um, so yeah I'm over the moon really happy with this love the colors can't wait to see what this looks like dry so my painting is now finished I'm so so happy with it so you'll see I've actually embellished it now it's dry and all I have done is use the end of the wrong end of a, a paintbrush and added some dots to the painting so everywhere along all the edges and in between the blooms I've just added some little dots, just of lots of different sizes. So you can see just some little swirls. Um, and the reason I've done that is I felt it was just a little bit too gappy. The gaps in between the blooms, because there's so few blooms in this compared to my other ones, the gaps in between just looked a bit too obvious. It, it just still wasn't a continuous solid enough spiral. Um, I obviously added the little swirls to try and pull it all together. And it did to some extent, but just not enough. 
Um, so really, really happy. I just think it adds a really pretty detail, just something totally, totally different. The blooms themselves are beautiful. I am so happy with them. You've just got such beautiful lacing um, and the colours, love this colour scheme. It feels like quite a sensible colour scheme, quite a grown up colour scheme for me. Um, normally I have lots of really contrasting colours and there's, there's not as much this time. So pale blue and gold on the dark sort of greeny, bluey base, I just think works so well. Um, now there's lots of gold in this, so let me just show you the shimmer that the gold produces because it's really pretty. Can you see everywhere that gold is just really shiny? So there's no varnish on this yet. I'll let it cure probably for about three weeks, then I'll varnish it and that gold will just come to life even more. So, so, so happy with this. It's such a shame that the colour was a custom colour for the background because I'll never be able to reproduce it. Um, and I love it. It's dark, but it's not, there's still some colour to it. It's not black. It's, it's, it's a dark colour, but yeah, really, really pretty. Really dark, bluey turquoise colour, tealy colour. Great, please let me know what you think. Um, you may find you don't like the little dots. I'm not sure, I'm really happy with them, but yeah, let me know, what do you think? Do you think they do complete it? Do you think they do work well? Um, let me know. Great, thanks so much for watching. Bye.